Okay, my love, so we're going to clear up some misconceptions because I am really sick of the narrow-minded one-sidedness of individuals who choose not to fully educate themselves in how energy and spiritual work actually works and continues to make assumptions or speak on things that they are completely wrong about when it comes to love work. So we're going to cut this to the chase. I have an actual two-hour video that I'm putting on YouTube to break this down further. But in the meantime, first of all, a love spell is an umbrella terminology. It is not a binding spell. It is not a marriage spell. It is not a force a person against their free will spell. So when you guys are referring to love spells or you're saying things like that's manipulative, you're binding their free will, please, please. First of all, why don't you ask what you're looking at before you make an assumption, okay? Because what you're saying and what you're seeing, what you're associating, what you're seeing, at least on my channel, you're very wrong. A love spell refers to a type of spiritual work that is tapping into a love vibration or a romantic relationship. However, love work can be done for family. It can be done for parent-child relationships. It can be done for romantic relationships. Most people only associate love work and it is primarily, yes, used in romantic settings. However, I have done love spells on families, mothers that want to heal relationships with their children, okay? Mothers that want to bind their children to them when they're going through custody things. Mothers and fathers who want to heal family quarrels. So please, we have to understand that first of all, the term love spell is an umbrella terminology okay it's like saying vegan right vegan is a terminology that is used for a particular type of diet that someone follows love spells is a terminology for a specific type of energy that is used within a spiritual practice so let's get that straight number one number two a binding spell binding somebody to you now first of all i counsel my clients before I recommend binding spells. And I don't bind anybody who's not in a committed relationship. Why would you want to bind somebody to you that you don't know? That you're not with? I have done binding spells in the past. I have done binding spells for people that I have advised them not to do them. However, I'm also running a business. And if a client wants a working done and she's been counseled and she still wants it done, then she wants it done. And that those clients, I've had people come back to me begging me to, can you please reverse what you did because I wanted this person and now I don't want them and I can't get rid of them. So binding spells, again, is a terminology for a very specific type of spiritual work. So just because you see a love spell does not mean it's a binding spell. So learn your terminology. Also, with this whole free will thing, okay, everything is energy. Understand that. In terms of manipulating someone's free will, now, can spiritual work, can spell work massage someone into doing what you want? Absolutely, it can. But when you shift energy, you shift the dynamic, you shift an outcome, you shift a sequence of events that occurs. However, people are living, breathing, thinking, conscious beings. If it was that easy to just put a love spell on someone and get instant results where they're walking around like, oh, okay, I'll do it. Oh, I'm so in love. If that were the case, I'd be out of business. And I'm just being real with y'all. I'd be out of business because if it were that easy to put a love spell on anybody you wanted and just have them fall to your their knees and do whatever you want them to do, then love magic wouldn't even have to exist because everybody would do one spell and they'd have what they want and be with who they want. And everything would just be blissful. It does not work that way. People have free will, yes, but you have to understand energy, energy plays a huge part. If someone does not like you, if they are not attracted to you, if they're done with you, if they've just had it, if they're over the relationship, right? Or if someone just has moved on and they've truly moved on, if the relationship has been so damaged, if the two of you are broken and someone has gotten to a point where they're like, I don't want to fuck with you, you can burn a thousand candles and you can go to all the practitioners you want to. It's not going to work. And even if it does, it's going to be temporary because if you do not change Let's take accountability, first of all. Everybody wants to put a love spell on somebody else. Nobody wants to take accountability for their own actions, their part that they played, because it takes two to tango. And you cannot sit up here and be like, well, this person did this, and they did that, and da -da 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 -da. if they did all that, that, if they were so bad and they caused the relationship to end, then why do you want them? Why are you putting a love spell to get somebody back that they were so bad in the relationship? It takes two people to get to where you are. So we're going to start off with some accountability. If you are doing love work to bring in a 
old flame you want to rekindle or reconcile or save a dying relationship, you need to have a plan in place. What are you planning to do to help heal and move forward? And you can't sit here and be like, I'm going to burn candles and I want that person to come back. I want them to chase me and I want them to be all about me. Why? If they left in the first place, there's a reason. If you got rid of them, there's a reason. And if you're going to burn candles to bring them back and then you want to sit back and just want them to just pour all over you when they didn't do that in the first place, well, that's probably not going to happen. And if it does, it's not going to last. And if it, it, even if it does, you have to be in an energetic space of being receptive. What happens is people are shocked that someone doesn't want to deal with them. And then they get into their ego and they get into their feelings, right? And then they're like, well, I want this person back. A lot of people don't really want the person back. They just want to be the one to either say, oh, look, you came back to me. Or they want them to come back just so they can break up with them or say, I don't want them. Or they want them to come back, but they want this person to come back and dominate them and act a certain type of way. I'm not saying that love work can't do that, but I'm saying you really need to check your ego as to why do you want this? How long do you think that's going to last? Love spell or not, nobody is going to stay in an unhealthy, let me rephrase that because that's not true. Love spell or not, no one is going to stay in a relationship where they are being abused, male or female. A lot of women, there's a lot of toxic femininity and women don't even understand that because maybe you're not verbally abusive, but you have to understand we as women, we are sensitive and yes, we expect to be treated a certain type of way. Absolutely. And we deserve to be treated a certain type of way, but a scorned, hurt woman, a wounded feminine woman is already sitting in a space that she's not able to receive a man. So you want to do love work to reconcile with your partner, but you're bitter you don't really want to, you want to reconcile, but you're still holding on to the bitterness. You're not even open. You're like, well, let me see what he does first. I'm going to see what he does. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this love spell and spend this money to bring him back. But then I'm going to have a wall up, not be receptive to him, have a stank ass attitude and wait and see what he does and wonder why he either comes and leaves or doesn't come close to you at all. And now you're paying for more love work and you're acting like, well, why didn't it work? It's not that the love work didn't work, it's you didn't work. Your energy, your thoughts, and your feelings play a 100% part in the results that you get. Regardless of whose fault it was, regardless of who left who. And again, if, some, if, if you broke it off with somebody because they weren't treating you right, or they left you because they didn't want you no more, regardless... And this person was that bad, then why are you doing love work to bring him back anyway? And why are you going to bring him back just to treat him like shit? If you're going to bring him back, then be in your divine feminine and be welcoming. I'm not saying let somebody run all over you. I'm not saying to just let somebody treat you however or accept mediocre treatment. But you got to have your head, your heart, and your mind in the right place or it's not going to work. But what I really want people to understand is please stop associating love spells with going against a person's free will. Because if somebody really, if there's nothing there, like not, there is nothing there, a love spell ain't going to work. And if it does, it's not going to work very long. If they come back to you, that's because there was something OK, there is something still there that they are also holding on to mentally, emotionally or energetically. So please, let's really, really take a minute before we spend our time, our energy, our money. This is the money that you're investing. And I know you don't have a money tree in your backyard. And this is the energy of your practitioner. And I don't know about other practitioners, but I don't have a lot of energy to waste trying to help you fix a problem if you're not going to help be a part of fixing the problem. But let's take a minute and educate ourselves on what it is that we're doing, what energy work is, and what love spells are before those who are uneducated come on my block speaking about something that they don't know. Let's do this. Let's ask questions before we assume. And the funny thing is, the very people that want to talk about it's manipulative, it's not manipulative when you're the one facing felony, right? You're the one that has to go to court. It's not manipulative when you're the one who got cheated on. It's not manipulative when you're the one who's about to get fired or evicted or lied on. The very people that want to talk about spell work is so manipulative. It's not that manipulative when it's your life that's being affected. You're the one on the other end of my phone. So let's watch ourselves. <laughs> 